Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun. And today, you asked, I'm finally answering. I have found a way to load the burrito method in Clearview. So we're going to be doing that today. Um, I will be re releasing a video on how I do it with um, red snappers because it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but this is going to be the way I do it in Clearview. Um, you know me, I like a table. We're going to talk food because it's the burrito method and that's how I remember. Um, I am working. I'm so excited to get this quilt loaded. Um, I just finished the one, sent it off. And this is, um, I will show you half and half. It's a big quilt. I think it's 83 by 97, but I'll just shift it down. It is, um, this colorway is um, Ruby Star Society, the um, speckled line, which I love. But it's, um, this is going to be, well, let me show you it first. So that's the quilt. You'll be able to see it more. I mean, this is going to be in a lot of stuff. Um, but this is going to be a quilt that is a um, stitch along with Stitch House. You know me. I'm down there all the time. And they showed me this project that they want to do a stitch along with. And I said, please make me one so I can um, quilt it. So I'm going to make a bunch of videos on um, quilting this. It's gonna be very ruler work heavy, which is why I'm gonna be loading it in the clear view mode. Um, but I am so excited. I took a picture and kind of um, started drawing about how I wanted to quilt it, you know, to get some ideas. Um, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a whole series on the process of like, here's the quilt, here's a picture. This is, you know, step by step, how I kind of went through it, um, design ideas. I will usually find design ideas and then once the quilt is loaded, like toss them out the toss them out the window. They're just ideas. They're something to give me, you know, an idea of what I want to do. And then once I get the quilt loaded and I start seeing things taking shape, I'll usually kind of change things up a little bit. Not all the time. Um, but there's a lot of negative space to play with. I have all of these white areas. I love this line because it's not just white fabric, it's speckled. So it has texture and everything. So um, I am going to use two layers of batting. So I'm going to use a layer. I think with this one, I might use a layer of 70-30. Um, and then a layer of wool on top. Who knows? I also might use 80-20. I'll let you know. Um, I haven't actually grabbed the batting yet. So I don't know if I have 70-30 in this size. Um, but I do have rolls. So that's not a problem. Other things, um, I'm loading this one. I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna use pins. Like I said, I had a red snapper video. Um, I know this quilt is square and I wanna keep this nice and straight. So I'm gonna use pins. I just don't feel like I get the same, um, keep things as straight when I use red snappers. There's, you know, there's a lot of shifting going on where I can, when I pin, I can keep all that shifting down really minimal. Um, other things, wide back. We're using a wide back um, fabric today. This is also from Ruby Star Society. This is some of the softest fabric I've ever like touched. It's like a cotton sateen. Oh my gosh. I want to lay under this quilt when it's done. Um, if you saw me do the panel, the Ruby Star Society panel, I showed pictures of that recently on my social media. If you don't follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, S-E-W, and that's on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Adam So Fun everywhere um, and YouTube, but you're already here with me. Um, it was the same type of fabric. It quilted up so nice. Um, this is going to be on the back, so like, okay, whatever. But um, the other one quilted up so nice and it just, it just looks fabulous. So um, I don't know. Let's get into it. Let's get um, loading. I'm going to do some of it from this view and then I'll move the camera around when I need to so you can all see what's going on. But um, I have Taco. Pushed him out of the way. I have my batting shears because I'm going to be cutting batting. If you don't have these batting shears, these are the best batting shears out there. Um, they have a blunt tip. So like I said, I have rolls of batting and I can roll them across the carpet and then just snip, 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 snip. I'm not catching the carpet. They cut so nice. Ugh, I love them. But sorry, I get raccoon shiny things. So I'm going to take my batting. I have it folded. Um, I did uh, trim up the sides to kind of give me get, get it square. Um, is it perfectly square? Probably not. It's a wide back. Um, I will tell you, 
when I use wide backs, I will try to square them up or I will rip them. Um, and I cut it and took it. There was probably almost um, six to eight inches that pulled off of both sides uh, because it just wasn't super square. Um, so I trimmed up the side. I'm still loading selvages on. So um, selvages are going to be uh, pinned onto the leader. So that's fine. Um, oh, some things with clear view before we get over there. And I have to tell you, in my head, this was folded right, and I almost just loaded it backwards. But I figured it out beforehand, or loaded it upside down. So we're, we're, when we're in clear view, if you haven't seen the other video, um, last week I uh, released a video that was clear view versus standard view, um, some of the differences, things you have to keep in mind. When we load in clear view, this leader, so I'm going to call this the high bar and this the low bar. The high bar is going to hold our backing. The low bar is going to hold our top. And then this is still the back bar. The high bar, the leader has to be flipped. We want it to cascade forward. So um, in standard view, we have both of those leaders falling and pulling towards the middle. But in clear view, you want them both going towards the back of the machine. You want them both facing away from you. Um, so make sure you do that first. Now, if you loaded it and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to switch my leader. It's okay. It will still work. I've done quilts that way. Um, you'll just get a little bit of a, a ridge at the beginning because the Velcro, it's going to fold on itself. So it doesn't, it doesn't lay flat at the beginning, but whatever. So let me get this loaded. So I've thrown my fabric all the way over. This is the same step as the burrito method the other way. And I want it all the way off the back of my table. I don't want it on the table. I want it fully off. Um, I have leader here. I want to keep a little bit of leader on my back bar. Because as I roll this up, especially being this big, I want to make sure that I have um, leader on that back bar and I want to make sure everything is off the table in the back falling towards the ground because we're going to use gravity to our advantage and we're going to use um, the tension from the fabric sliding against uh, the leader. I'm back. I had to move the camera so we can actually see. So um, I'm going to walk around to the back and just make sure that this is, that, that is falling off nicely. Um, it will correct itself when we roll in a minute, but I just want to make sure that everything is just falling off back here nice and easy and straight-ish. So that's good. I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, what I should have done first, which I forgot, uh, you can tell I don't do this a lot. I prefer standard view, um, is I'm going to take my leader of my high bar and I'm going to pull this out. I want to leave a little bit rolled up, but I'm going to pull the rest of it out and have it just hang forward. Because you know me, I like to make a table, and this is how we're going to make a table using the clear view. I'm laying right over everything, just how we were. All right, so everything's, fo everything's falling forward. Now we're gonna fold our fabric up and make our table. Um, you have to be careful because this leader is kind of holding everything in place. So we don't wanna to go too far up. I'm gonna go maybe four inches um, right, on, uh, right onto itself or right past that bar. Make sure things look nice and straight, straight-ish. There we are. So now I have my table and I have my straight edge. I can take my leader and fold it so it's right on, um, right in line with this. I'm gonna move the camera really quick so you can see what I'm doing from a different angle. All right, so we can see what we did right here. We Everything was cascaded over. I just folded it straight up on itself, made our table. Now I'm going to grab my leader 
and I have a straight edge on my table to line everything up. So this is kind of just like the first step when we loaded before. Now I'm gonna grab my pins. Um, so I use one, a Zirkel magnet. That, um, you can't see what it was, but I have my highlight. This Zirkel magnet will fit right onto that highlight. So I'm gonna stick it here. Be careful if you have a pin, or if you have a, um, pins on a magnet, if that magnetic pin cushion falls, it becomes a grenade. Those pins will shoot everywhere, so you have to be very careful. So now I'm going to pin this. And I want to pick those pins up right within that quarter inch of the edge. Taking a nice big bite, not over pinning. And, um, I like a two fingers width, a fi one finger to two finger width between each pin. All right, so we are pinned on. Uh, a few things that I thought about while I was um, taking forever to pin this, and I will tell you my hands hurt. I haven't pinned in a long time because I use those red snappers. But um, like I said, pinning is going to be more accurate for me. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you'll notice that I didn't center the quilt. I just throw my backs on. I load them where they land. I can um, look and make sure that things... Um, that they look like they're even and everything. So that's not something I'm going to worry about. Um, there was something else, but I forgot. So we'll just keep going. So now I'm going to pull everything and let it fall forward. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back to the, the back. And I want to pull up all that extra slack. So remember, I'm in the back, or um, we have it coming all the way off the back. It's all the way off the table. We have a little bit of leader rolled up on that back bar. So as we roll this, as we roll this, it's gonna, you're gonna see it's gonna get, it's gonna tense up in the back and it's gonna stay nice and taut as we roll. So I'm gonna drop my ratchet. I always drop my ratchet anytime I'm gonna roll a quilt because I wanna make sure I'm rolling the correct way. And you'll see it got nice and tight. I'll make sure my leaders are straight on the sides. This side looks good, this side looks good. Now, once I get to a place where my leaders are rolled on the bar, so once I get to about right here, I have these um, sew tights. Can you see that? There we are. Sorry, it's dark. There's no light over there. Um, so I have these sew tights. I'm going to stick one on each on the leader on both sides of this leader. So there's one over there. Here's this one. And I just keep them on my bar next to the leader. But this will keep that leader from flopping around. And I'm going to roll. I'll make sure to smooth it out at the beginning. But because of the gravity helping us, because of the tension from going against that leader in the back, this is going to roll up pretty straight. So I can do like a good few turns and then see if there's any ripples or anything. I can also see it. I did press this. I'm a big presser. Um, but I didn't use any like best press or anything. I just pressed it with some steam. I think I um, got one side a little straighter than the other because that side doesn't look like it's cut straight, but this is this side is loading up so straight. <clears throat> also, the other thing that you'll notice, um, my I have my um, handy hammock, one of my favorite things that I have, um, and the knob for the handy hammock 
gets in the way of the hand wheel when I am in clear view. So I can't move this bar and switch them. So I don't have a hand wheel. So that's one, you'll notice I'm not using my hand wheel. The second thing I that you'll notice is that I don't sit in the middle and roll it from here because as you roll it, you're gonna disrupt that fabric. I always roll from the side and I always try to roll off the leader too. And I'm gonna roll it up until I have about six inches hanging off the back. But it's, I can feel it, it's rolling up nice and tight and that's what I like. And then this is the part, if, if you do get a little, if it does get a little loose, this is when it's gonna happen because we're losing tension. We don't have a ton of gravity. Can you see that? You can see back here where that's hanging over. So I'm gonna go until it hangs about right here. And right there, that looks good. And now we have our high bar, which is holding our back loaded. Um, oh, that I remembered what I said. We, backing, wrong side up. And I always just kind of run my hand around it. This feels pretty tight. This, this not like tight, like it's pulling, but it's very taut around that bar. So it rolled up really nice. So now we have to go to the back and we have to make the burrito. We'll see you in a second. All right, so now we're in the back and it's time to make the burrito. And this is the reason I call this the burrito method because um, it's a way for me to help me remember what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, in real life, I would leave this exactly like this. In real life, I'm gonna pull this around, bring my leader around and do everything with my quilt top right there. You're like, oh my gosh, what did you just do? I can't follow that because you didn't really explain it. I'm gonna redo it, but this is how I would do it in real life. I just want you to know that. I'm moving the top out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll just put my pins on top of them so I can don't have to go all the way around. And we'll put everything back to where it was. So this is how we looked before. This was hanging somewhere. So the, I call this the burrito method because it's a way to remember the steps. So I call this the burrito method because it's a way to remember the steps. Kind of like, a, um, I can't think of what the word is, but it's kind of like that word that I can't think of. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend the leader is a tortilla. So for this, this is our tortilla. This top bar, or the back bar is beans, and we can remember that because beans and bar both start with B. And the idler bar is cheese. And we just remember it because it's the burrito method and we like a bean and cheese burrito, please. So what I'm gonna do, standing in the back, my ratchet is unlocked, and I am working with a super leader. This is a, um, a 27 inch leader instead of a 17 change changes the world. No matter which way you load, a super leader is an amazing thing to have. Um, and you can get one for any frame. So here's my, here's my leader. My ratchet is unlocked. I'm taking my tortilla, pulling it towards me. Okay. Right off of the back bar. I'm going to flip this around. I keep flipping around so you can see, but I want you to see what I'm doing. All right. So I have my tortilla is pulled straight off of this bar towards me. I'm gonna go under and wrap up the beans and the cheese. Did you catch that? I took my tortilla straight out towards me and went under and around to wrap up the beans and cheese in our tortilla. And then I'll just move around, make sure this is wrapped up. So we just made the burrito by wrapping the beans and the cheese, the idler bar and the back bar up in our tortilla, which is our leader. I hope you're with me. Now at this point, 
I make sure everything's nice and taut. I'm gonna lock my ratchet and make sure everything's nice and taut across. And like I said, I would usually do this with my quilt still hanging there. So let's pretend the quilt was still hanging there. The other thing I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to pull this and have this hang down so that everything is nice and straight. You can kind of see it a little bit. I'm going to look at the swag of this and if it's off, so let me see if I can shift it and let's see if you can see that. So this is off. You can't really see it in the camera or in the thing, but if it's off, you're going to see all these ripples. We don't want ripples. You know what a nice swag looks like. We want that nice swag because that means that this backing is, that this backing is loaded straight. So if it were off a little bit, we can see that maybe we'll sit like you could see this and um, it wouldn't look this straight. It would kind of be off at an angle. And then you could correct yourself. You could load it. And as long as we want that nice swag, if we have that nice swag, we know that this is straight and I might um, then maybe rip a straight edge or, you know, do, do a little bit of maneuvering to make sure that everything is loaded nice and straight. Cause we want this to be um, the backing to be pretty straight. That looks good. I might shift it this way just a tan. Now I'm just getting picky. Now, here's, here's the edge of our quilt or our backing. Here's our leader. And we have about an inch. So I can go up and click my top bar. And I'm gonna raise the top bar until they're right in line with each other. I'm gonna pull this. Now I just shifted everything. Good job, Adam. And I clicked it too far. <laughs> so I can now just turn my back bar. I can turn the bar a little bit, bring this down. And when I get to where everything is nice and lined up and it looks good, 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 we're in line. I'm going to then take my pins and pin across. All right, so now that our back is pinned on, I can just go back to the front and we'll move you back to the front and I will pull it and adjust things to where I want them. We'll see you in a second. All right, we're back at the front. I have my backing pinned on. So now I'm gonna advance this. It will fall, which is what it's supposed to do. When it falls, I'm gonna turn my back to where I want it. And usually I try to line it up pretty close to the back. I can move my front. And so what you'll notice, especially when you use a wide back, especially when you have a big quilt, you're gonna maybe see a little bit of ripple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this back and forth a few times. And by rolling it back and forth, it's gonna disperse that unevenness and it's gonna make it look nice and perfect. You have to remember those magnets are on there. So I'll probably do this three times because it's a big back. Um, sometimes you, you only take one. So I just roll it all the way back and now we'll come this way. And you'll notice that I'm not trying to smooth anything out. I'm just rolling it back and forth a few times. All 
Our backing is loaded. We're ready for the top. All right, everyone, we're back, and I've changed clothes because it's the next day because we got we had dinner, and I was on the couch, didn't feel like coming back, and that's also okay. You don't have to start and finish everything the same at the same time. Um, we're ready to start loading our top, but one thing I want to do, I am going to use two battings on this. Um, like I said, I'm going to use a 70. This is Quilter's Dream, both of them, um, my favorite type of batting out there. This is 70-30. Um, I've used it a few times. Um, I really like the 80-20, but I want to see how how this one and the wool uh, work together. So I'm going to try this one out. Um, I I know it's going to look good because I know other quilters who do it. I just haven't done it yet. So, um, so that's it. But I'm going to get my batting ready before I actually get my top loaded. Um, I know this top is about 84 by 97. I have a king roll of batting, so I know that it's going to be um, about uh, 120 long. So um, this is, if you don't have room, so I usually, um, this is a package batting. Most of the times I buy batting on the roll. Um, I wanted to try this batting out, and I don't use it all the time, but I keep rolls of 80-20, and I keep rolls of wool. Um, if you don't have a lot of room to roll that out and get that cut, this is what I've found that I really like to do. So after I load my back... I will get my batting. All right, I'm gonna put my roll on the bars. This is a big roll. Um, it's being supported by the bars, so it's not hurting the um, backing that's loaded or anything. And I can unroll it. And hopefully I gave myself enough room. I wanted to be able to make sure you could see it. I can grab my tape. And it's about 87, so I wanna, I'll probably go, um, bigger than that and usually if it's something I'm quilting for myself of course I need like eight more inches so let's do this if it's something I'm quilting for myself I always overcut it just because I'll do something with those scraps they end up in samples they end up in uh pillow tops or, or um, throw pillows. So, I'm going to measure again. And since I'm over cutting it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I have my favorite batting shears. These are the HQ batting shears. And it cuts so easy. All right, so the batting's out of the way. Um, I used to keep my roll of batting under my frame, um, but now I store other stuff under there. And um, I have a cabinet. I have a cabinet right under the stairs. Um, so one thing I will do, this is ready. Um, but the width is the, it's the correct width. The length I know is going to be longer. So I need to refold this to get it ready for whenever I actually put it on the quilt. So I've already refolded this one. And this one is folded. So this is the center. So I don't have to mark it. This is the center. I'll be able to lay it down, open it up, unfold it. So I want to do the same thing for this batting, especially um, like batting on fabric. Like, you know, you just can't shift it around. It doesn't shift around easy. So I want to get it all the way prepared for me. So when I um, get to the point where I'm going to load it up, everything's ready. If you don't follow Stitch House, um, they have a really great YouTube channel. I do a lot of stuff with them on their YouTube channel. I uh, have a series on their channel called uh, HQ in the Know, where we go over some handy quilter stuff for people who are interested in buying. So uh, make sure you check them out. All right, so now I have this one folded and ready, and we can get to loading this top. But I always like to have my batting ready for me as soon as that top is loaded, that I can just accordion fold my top and get my batting in there. So I know where the bottom is, and the bottom is this side. Um, now, I didn't mark my center. Remember I said I don't mark my centers. I have this whole piece. I'm going to center my quilt on this. So just like before, I will open it up. <clears throat> I've already ironed and pressed this, just like I did with the backing. Did 
throw it over. And I have it hanging over just like before. This time we're gonna use the backing as, my, as our table. So we have a table and everything. That looks centered enough. I'm just coming back here now so I don't have to do it in a minute. Making sure everything is hanging nice in the back. Um, what I love about uh, Sarah, so Sarah uh, over at Stitch House pieced this. She also stay stitched it. So she, when she was done, she took it to her domestic machine and just did like a two, uh, two millimeter stitch all the way around. So especially if it's a quilt, you're gonna be um, handling a lot before you um, get it long arm or get it quilted. If you stay stitch it, it'll help keep everything straight. So um, you probably can't see that because this is there. So here's my quilt, it's hanging over. We're gonna, lo we're gonna uh, load it to that lower bar. So I'm gonna fold everything up. Cause you know me, I like to use my table. And at this point, I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see it from a different angle. All right, so here we are, just like before. This was hanging down here. I just folded it up on itself, making the table. And now I have that nice straight edge. I'm gonna unlock my ratchet to my lower bar, bring my leader up, and it should lay right on, or right in line with that edge. I have my pins and I'm gonna pin across. So we'll see you when I finish pinning. All right, so now that I have the top pinned on, I like to go to the back one more time like I did before with the backing. And I will pull all this nice and taut. Make sure it's hanging right. If I see fuzzies, pull them off. So I go to the back, I pull it tight just so it's gonna, again, gravity, tension, friction. Um, it'll help me roll this up straight. And, um, and it opens everything up so I can see like, oh, there's a spare thread. I need to stop throwing it on the ground because that's what I always do. Um, I'm gonna turn my crank so I'm gonna lock my ratchet. And this happens to be the, the bar with the hand wheel, so I can turn the hand wheel. But see how this is nice and taut rolling? This is really gonna help me when I roll this up. It's gonna help everything to roll nice and smooth. Now my leader's at the bar, or wrapped around the bar. I'm gonna grab my sew tights and snap them on so that leader's not just flopping around. We don't want anything all loosey-goosey. So I'll rotate, I'll watch the sides, make sure it's ro rolling up straight. Check it, make sure everything looks good and it's not wrinkled up. Like I said, Sarah's really good at piecing and this is rolling up fantastic. Let's check the other side. I sometimes feel like I'm a good piecer, but like, this is awesome. The only time my, my quilts, I always say, the only time my quilts are perfect and straight is when I paper piece because I sewed on paper and you can't get that wrong. Well, I guess you can sew on the wrong line, but I hope I don't do that anymore. Now, one thing you'll notice this has a lot of pieces. There's a lot of seams in this, but because there's not a border, all that bulk from all those seams are gonna kind of be dispersed and it's still gonna lay pretty flat. If I had some borders on this, those borders as I rolled this up would get really loosey goosey and wavy because all of these seams have all of those extra pieces of fabric. So there's a seam here. So you have the extra two layers of fabric under that, under the fabric itself. So. Um, if you have loosey goosey sides, you can tuck some batting up as you roll and it'll kind of take up that slack, put a little more tension. 
and I'm going to roll till about right there. I don't roll it all the way up. I only roll it to where it's about an inch farther than my pins because that's one thing I can start really close to those pins and be okay because um, I know that I know that I have length, but this will uh, make me get the help me get the most out of my uh, quilt space. So when I'm here, now I need to do load the batting up. So I'm going to pop my bars up in the pole cradles. And remember, this is this is one of the things if you watch the uh, the clear view versus uh, standard view that I find um, it's not hard, but you have to spend a little more time managing your batting. I find it as a um, disadvantage of the clear view, the batting kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Batting management. So I, I accordion fold this one so it's out of the way. It's just sitting on that bar. It's not going to do anything. Um, but it's out of the way. And I feel like it's not going to wrinkle if I accordion fold it. And I might just be crazy. And I do this when I load the other burrito method. I just accordion fold the quilt right on top of that bar. So now it's out of the way. I can get under here. Uh, this is an awkward angle to me. It's kind of like I have to put my hands back up, going up into the bar. Uh, is it going to kill me? No. All right. So double layer batting. I'm starting with a thinner layer. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So this is the center of the quilt because I know how many blocks there are because I counted. So I will open this up. I have a nice overhang. Get this through here. And this is, again, this is where I think it's a little bit weird. Now we'll open it up the long way. And I'm gonna try to put this right under my pins. Because again, I can get really close to those pins and know that I'm not going to hit them. I can see them. And that's the one of the reasons I like the way I load is the pins are facing up. This, se this seam right here is facing up so I can see it. So I know I'm not going to hit anything on the underside on accident. There we are. I have a good four inches over here. About three-ish over here. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will look down and make sure that these are hanging straight. This, uh, just like wide backs, they're not always cut perfect. This looks really good. So now I can get this. And I, um, I usually would accordion fold this down and then toss it into my, um, into my uh, handy hammock. In this case, I'm not going to do that because I need to add the uh, wool batting and I want them to kind of pull up together as I advance. So I'm just going to get this under this bar and let it drop. Kick it out of my way. Now I have my wool batting. I know where the center is. Uh, you can tell it's a little bit more fluffy. So now up here, this wool batting is going up about an inch farther than um, than the 70-30. Uh, I'm okay with that because I'm going to make my plumb line lower than that anyway, so it's not going to be an issue. I'll open this up all the way. I'm going to put this back down. Make sure I get into my holes. Oh. I will pull this and see, because we accordion folded it, I can just lift it right back up, lay it. It goes back so nice. And then this can wrap around and go into my hammock. Now, just to let you know, that batting is going to be really heavy. So this is one of the reasons I love my handy hammock because it keeps it off the ground. Because you can't see this because I made sure you couldn't see straight down to my feet. But um, like I said, I grab threads and throw them on the ground a lot. I really just need to vacuum this, but I didn't do it. 
So that will keep the batting off the ground and picking up all those stray threads. And that's it. We're loaded. Um, I'm going to move the camera around really quick. We'll see you in a second. All right, so there you have it. Loading the burrito method in Clearview. Um, we're all loaded. I'll just go in. I'm going to do my plumb line and get started on this quilt. Um, so I do want to let you know, because I was filming this and I was showing you how to load, I know not everyone has red snappers. So I did pin the back. If I were doing this with no video, I would have still used red snappers on the back and saved me probably a half hour at least. Um, I mean, because that pinning takes a while and snapping takes five seconds. So I would have snapped the back still. In this case, I would have still pinned on the top because again, I wanted to keep it nice. I wanted to keep it really straight. Um, and I feel like I get better results when I pin. Um, I don't float my tops. So if you're going to ask me, do you ever float your tops? I don't. I, um, if it's a little 20 inch square, I might, but it's, again, I'm just going to baste it down and then start quilting. Um, I do a lot of dream big panels. I love them. I still don't float them. I will pin them. Um, it's just, it, is there anything wrong with floating? No, again, it's one of those things, hundred ways to do everything, do what's comfortable for you. It's not comfortable for me. It stresses me out. Like I get a panic, like it's not going to go straight. So I always pin. It's just something that I've done and that I always do. Um, but yeah, I would have snapped on the back because if it was off a little bit, it wouldn't have been a problem. Um, I'm so excited to quilt this. I'm so excited to quilt this. Uh, I went back and I was looking at my, uh, my quilt plan. Um, maybe next week I'll do a, um, how I designed the quilt plan and, you know, kind of designed and went through this and, um, in my head and on that quilt plan, this is going to be fantastic. So we'll see what it actually happens. Um, as always, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, hit the, uh, like, and subscribe and hit that bell icon. So you're notified when new videos drop. Uh, what else? Uh, follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram, and Adam So Fun everywhere, really. I hope you're having a wonderful early spring, and we will see you all in the next video. At the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh, we want to have a good time. Bye, all.